Okay, I just want to make this as quick as possible. The footage that you're going to see coming up next this happened three years ago, almost to the day. Most of it's still relevant, but just keep that in mind. This is what I have to say about all of that. So months ago, I had a video that I posted where I was stopped by police for walking at 12.45 a.m. Uh, on a Tuesday night or something like that, with bags in hand, a block away from a 24-hour uh, grocery store, a block away from the busiest street in the city, one of them, and uh, this is a fairly large city, and a block away from a 24-hour McDonald's, and 20, uh, a block away from a very popular bar that's that was certainly quite busy at the time. Either way, I take a usual path where I'd walk to hit a certain Pokestop because I was playing Pokemon, and I had in one hand a bag with uh, two bags of chips in it, so that was a pretty obvious bag of something. And in my other hand, I had my phone. And at no point had I ever walked away from the roadside or walked in a way that made it look like I was being suspicious. But by walking down a Kerr Ave, which is where uh, where it was, uh, a police officer must have seen me walking and alerted a couple other officers about it. So what turned out is I turned to go to a tattoo shop, which you can see in my video, where the pokey stop is to grab the balls and then cross the street to go to the other one, which is down Kerr a little further. And in doing so, a cop comes flying around the corner and he, he like uh, stops right at the, the end of the road on the wrong side of the street. And I have no idea why he's there. I mean, I'm not doing anything wrong. So uh, I'm not, I, I have my original plan of get the pokey stop, get the balls and keep going the other direction. So uh, as soon as I get my spin of the ball, I uh, turn to cross the street and I uh, hear, hey, hey, this loud shouting. And I'm like, uh, my name's not hey. So I kept walking and he's like, you, and I was like, oh, so I must be talking to me because I have no idea at this time who he's talking to. I'm not doing anything wrong. Why would he be calling me? Hey, I don't know. So either way, uh, what winds up happening is he comes running up. And I finally, at this point, got my camera going. And at this point, he sees the camera is now in his face. Calmly, he explains. I'm stopping you because we have a lot of suspicious activity people get broken into here. I checked the police reports and everything, and I saw that there was one place just around the corner where I just walked past that was robbed twice, three weeks prior, and in a matter of a couple days between. So someone robbed the place twice. And it even looked like someone stole, like, uh, some sort of uh, video flash drive or something. Uh, it was on the the list of what was missing. Now, one place got hit, hit twice. It, it almost makes me think, I mean, it was for, like, power tools, too. It was for, like, big heavy things, things that you just don't carry in a bag of groceries with chips. No. No, this was for, for like, you know, things the size of leaf blowers and stuff. So obviously not something that someone would be walking around probably within a backpack. Anyway, I was carrying my groceries in my backpack because I like to have my hands free and I just had my chips, the light items, in a in a uh, in a plastic bag. No big deal. But to them, that's very suspicious. You know, you're carrying uh, you're carrying groceries. Oh, that's suspicious. No, they they didn't even pay attention to the fact that my hand was occupied the entire time with a bag of chips, which I had been eating from the whole time, uh, previous to them stopping. But they ignored that and then immediately were launched into this attitude of, you're guilty, you're the person that's been breaking in three weeks ago who, who did it twice in a row but is somehow done, and probably is someone that works there that, that or worked there in the past. That's my suspicion. I mean, if someone's hitting the place twice like that, it sounds like some sort of personal grudge, like somebody get paid or something. I don't know. It has nothing to do with me, and I was happy to tell them that. They didn't want to hear that. No, no, no. They they were like, well, you got to be up to no good because you're walking around at 12.45 a.m. And here you are at quarter to one in the night, mm -hmm. okay, walking around with a backpack. Is so that I'm illegal? Asking who, I'm asking who you are. Oh, you know, as far as I know, there's no curfew anywhere. Uh, not in the United States unless there's some sort of 
you know, riots going on, and certainly there weren't. So uh, I, uh, I just stood for I stood for my rights, and people online were saying, "Well, what? You why are you being a dick about it?" I'm not being a dick. I'm I'm being assertive about my rights. I'm saying no. And if you were to sit there and go, "Well, I don't know, maybe no," I I really don't want to answer your questions. You'll get jumped on for that because they'll see you as showing a sign of weakness, if you will. It'll, you're waffling. No, I was very direct in what I said, and I wasn't being rude about it. I was telling them exactly what they needed to hear, which was, I'm not going to answer your questions. Am I free to go? And am I being detained? Those are the key questions you can ask without having to get any farther. In fact, everything they said to me or asked me, I would answer with another question. I wasn't about to sit there and answer questions. I wanted to ask them questions in return. And it was a cyclic thing that never got any information out of me for them. Uh, one more thing that a uh, few people commented on was this whole thing like, oh, he took your picture. Now, number one, I'm in public. People can take your picture in public. That's, that's perfectly legal. Hey, if I have a right to do it, they have a right to do it. I'm not concerned so much about that. And what most people didn't notice is that Officer St. Pierre had a body cam. It may have been running the entire time. Who knows? But recently a law passed in North Carolina that says that that body cam evidence cannot be just freedom of information requested and, and, and they don't want people just inundating police departments with requests for these videos as, as you, we see in the today today's modern world people are posting these on youtube and who knows everyone could just sit there and say i want a copy and then upload their own copy but either way uh the whole point here is that there has been a law that makes that camera inaccessible without a court order so definitely filming my act of filming was for my protection and i was fully in right of doing it and I'm glad I did, because who knows what would have happened had I not been filming. This is where it comes down. People are like, oh, so that, you know, you just had to provide your ID. If I provided my ID, what's the next question? The next question becomes, okay, well, uh, we're going to run you for warrants. There's no warrants. They're not going to find anything. Okay, well, there's got to be something wrong with this person. They're, we wanna f they're, they're in a witch hunt at this point. They want a reason for why they stop me. They don't have one. One. They've manufactured this idea of that I'm this criminal that that somehow magically robbed a place without even walking in or around it. I just walked past it on the roadside. That doesn't. If they saw that, they would know that I never approached the building. Either way, um, the the point here is that they had nothing to go on, but they were fishing. So. Immediately, if I were to say, this is my ID, here's who I am, they'd, they'd find nothing. They'd say something about, oh, is your address correct? And if it isn't, well, you need to do that and you need to do this. And it turns into this whole thing. Well, I can give you a ticket for this and that. And it, it makes things worse for me. Next, they would have immediately say, well, if this person's going to give the ID, then would you mind if I take a look in that bag? That would be the next question I guarantee would have been, would you mind if I look in your bag? You know, I, I don't I just just want to make sure there's nothing in there. And you know what they would find? They'd find some avocados. They'd find some bananas, stuff like that. Ooh, but they may find also that I had some aspirin or something, uh, uh, my Advil and aspirin, things that I carry just in case I ever have a headache while I'm on the go. But had they saw that, they would have been like, oh, well, gee, what is this? And that could have turned into an incident where they say, well, this is some sort of drug, perhaps, because, you know, when you walk around with some, it shakes and it knocks all the identifications off of it because it just works like a rock in a tumbler. It smooths out all the pills. It flakes them off. Anyway, the whole point here is that they would have possibly said, well, these look suspicious. And then they may have confiscated. They may have said, well, we're going to test these. We're going to hold you because we think this is drugs or something stupid. It could turn into a whole big mess over nothing. And by me saying no, immediately to providing ID, they knew what kind of person they're dealing with in the sense that they knew that I was not going to just lay down and say, insert into my ass please <laughs> they knew I wasn't about to bend over for them so uh, by doing so 
I was out in under four minutes. What you see from the video start until about three minutes in, that's when they actually came up and the third cop went over to the, the place that had been broken into several times. He walked over there and he had a look at the place and saw that probably the doors were all fine. That's my assumption is because he disappeared in that direction and came back and said, everything looks okay. Uh, you can't really hear it, but it's, that's what he said. And that's when I was like, well, by the by. And I, and I decided at that point, because I realized they had nothing and they were about to release me or they already said it and I just, uh, you can't really hear it. Either way, I had been walking up and down that same street at like uh, 6 p.m. and I saw some uh, a car going in between all those buildings, like weaving in and out as I was walking down the street. And I was like, that's very odd. Maybe I should phone that in. Yeah, I was going to phone it into the police because I always have that number ready and handy. And I've make plenty of calls. I make calls all the time about, oh, there's some uh, metallic balloons. That was the last one that, that was on the power lines that was sparking and I called that in the fire department came out they took a look then they got the uh, power company to come out that's the th that's what I do is in my uh, way to try and make the world better I, I report things when I see them but I don't give my name I don't give my information I don't need to that's an irrelevant but I do my part they were trying to do their part I understand that but at the same time uh, you could be in, put into a terrible position by saying too much, even if you're completely innocent. This happens a whole lot more often than you can imagine. Um, there's several cases where this happens. There's people that have been let off de death row that were completely innocent, but they were coerced into saying something, and then they, they misconstrued what someone said or extracted only a certain element and used that to, to condemn them. So, again, you never want to talk to the police and give them too much information. You trivial s stuff about the video also uh people were on about the idea of knowing the difference between reasonable suspicion and probable cause yes reasonable suspicion has to have certain qualifying factors and it's debatable whether they actually achieve that i turned to cross the street but that was not necessarily enough alone um it was night in an area that supposedly was high crime. The high crime thing is kind of BS. Uh, yeah, that place got broken into twice. And further down the street, another place did get broken into. And that was also three weeks or whatever before. So it's not like it was me walking through a residential neighborhood that had been crime riddled and people going down shooting guns and stuff. No. It was an area I've been walking for years and never had an issue, never had an issue, never uh, even seen much go on. You know what I do see go on on that street? I, if I ever walk it at like 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., I see people driving with their, their cell phones out and driving and texting while driving four in a row sometimes. Texting and driving. Texting and driving. Texting and driving. Texting and driving. Four in a row, wow. And I videotaped this just so I can uh, hopefully at some point put together a video showing how bad it is. But of course that stuff doesn't get, you know, taken care of. And I see accidents happen on, there, uh, happen on that same strip as well. I've, I've walked by a couple at least within the last year. I've seen fat fatal accidents in this town uh, Two of them that I've, I've actually been right in the neighborhood of. One, I was 20 minutes shy of walking th through that intersection. I hesitated to leave. Had I left, I would have walked through the intersection and got clobbered and killed. Possibly. So, I mean, it's just, there are real things that are real concerns. These small incidents where people are breaking into a few places occasionally... I, they affect maybe a, a business, but ultimately, I think it's more. The thing that worries me more is the fact that they don't do more to stop bad driving. They don't do more to police that. Their concerns are, of course, uh, varied. They have to worry about drug problems and stuff, but that takes me to another issue entirely right now. Now, uh, Joe St. Pierre, the uh, officer that is spitting on the sidewalk, as many of you noticed. 
he was in another recent video that just came out uh, recently from another local, a, a local who is an Uber driver that also happened to be a practicing lawyer working in the court system uh, as a public defender. So this guy driving Uber, Jesse, um, Jesse Bright, I believe, he's driving Uber, makes a pickup and drops the guy off. The guy runs and is there to, I guess, pick up his paycheck, and then he wants to get back in the car and return. But on the return, the police pull uh, Jesse over. He pulls over into a parking lot, and three more cars surround him. And uh, this is broad daylight. This is just daytime. And what winds up happening is they try and bully him. They they get to a point where they they have the uh, the passenger pulling out all of the stuff and putting it on the front seat. Now, if this guy supposedly has drugs, which was the claim, um, making a drug, st stopping at a drug house or whatever, if he had drugs on him, you probably don't want him emptying his pockets onto your car seat, especially after he made it known that he's an Uber driver. But either way, the, the interesting part here is that um, one of the police officers there, not Joe St. Pierre, but another one, I forget his name, uh, who is actually being reviewed at the moment uh, by internal affairs, he he told this lawyer that it is illegal for him to be filming him. Oh, yeah, and there's also the fact that I'm talking about Jesse Bright. You know, I actually got him as an Uber rider once. Uh, I ordered Uber, and he showed up. So I got to get the skinny about all this from him directly, and apparently the the person that was telling him all that nonsense about that the uh, there's this new law that he can't videotape, he got demoted. So <laughs> there was some justice um, because he works in the the law field and everything. He didn't want to stir any waves, but he was certainly happy to see that that one guy did his comeuppance. And uh, outside of that. The other thing that's interesting about Jesse Bright is I did run into him a second time, and that was during playing uh, Pokemon, believe it or not. I, I was at a place, a burrito place in town, where a bunch of us were going to do a raid, and there was Jesse Bright. I was like, hey, Jesse Bright! <laughs> so, yeah, not only is he uh, involved in this, uh, in my in my references here, but we also played Pokemon together. Whoa! <laughs> he was my Uber ride. Whoa! Just crazy how it all worked out in the end. Anyway, that's all. And he's all like, you better not be filming me. And he comes around and intimidates from the other side of the car uh, and comes to his passenger side and he starts threatening him with arresting him for filming. That it's a law. And the, the, the Jesse, as a lawyer, is like, well, I'm not aware of this law. And he tries to get them to explain where this law came from. And... Um, they, of course, just, you know, Meh, well, it's a new law, blah. You know, they just discount it to being a new law and not have to explain it. So what winds up happening is uh, he asks an, uh, another officer, a sheriff that's standing by, what about this law? And he's like, oh, yeah, it's a new law. So two police officers in a row tell him a lie, which legally they're allowed to do. So why would he even ask these questions? I, I don't even know, but it, it's it's great to see when they do lie because it's, it shows you that you should never trust anything that you actually hear and it tells you again why you should not be speaking with them because if you're willing to be truthful with a police officer, it doesn't mean they're going to be truthful to you. And uh, even though you have your best interests in mind, they certainly don't have your best interests in mind. Why is that funny? What's the dog indicator when he smells something? Just that kind of barking whine thing? Tell me. I, what do you mean? Aren't you the canine officer? Yeah, and when he smells something, I mean, does he, was it, is it like the whining bark or he jumps up, special tail wag? I'm just, some, something keyed y'all off so that all of a sudden y'all can search my car. I'm just asking you what it was. Huh? I, they said you could explain it to me because you're the canine officer. Against cooperation goes both ways, right? Hey, I'm trying to cooperate. Uh, well, you know what? 
I've completely cooperated with everything that's been asked. Did, did Sergeant explain to you why we're searching the vehicle and the nope. indication on the vehicle? No, I've, I've asked both of them and they won't tell me. He said he would tell me and he said he would tell me. Okay, the dog indicated on the vehicle on both sides. And what that could mean is very simple. You're an Uber driver and you may have had somebody in your vehicle recently that had narcotics. That narcotic smell sticks to the seats or whatever it is that that dog indicates on. Well, okay, that's why we're searching vehicle. I've probably caused. I've You're prob a lawyer. No, I'm sure you can look it up. I have okay. reasonable suspicion to believe that a crime is afoot. Look it up. Look it up. Pokemon tells you to turn away from the police when they come and talk. Look it up. Look it up. Look it up. Listen to me. I have okay. reasonable suspicion to believe that a crime is afoot. Listen to me. Look it up. Listen to Look me. Up. That to me is Look it suspicious. Up. Look it up. Pokemon tells you to turn away from the police when they come Look it up. Look it up. Well, okay. That's why we're searching people. I've traveled far. I've traveled. Look it up. Look it up.